Uh, I don't agree with him, uh, but I thank him for giving me the opportunity. And I just want to correct him on a few things, on Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ. Um, I just wish that you can respect Pro Prophet Muhammad as much as I respect Jesus Christ and Virgin Mary. And there are certain, there are a number of things that uh, I need to uh, clarify, I think. Um, first of all, this uh, caliphate, uh, uh, the Lord Desai is very knowledgeable and I don't want to disagree with you, but the Ottoman Empire, Empire the Mughal Empire, the North African Empire, really the caliphate did not exist, exist after uh, uh, Sayyidina Omar, Osman and Ali and that's it. And so this, this deliberate concept that is brought in as mischievous, Muslims can have four wives in the United Kingdom. Nonsense. British law is the superior uh, law in this country. Nobody is allowed to have four wives. And really, you know, using this language that Muslims are breeding more children and they will take over. This is the same language that Nazis used against the Jewish communities before Second World War. Deliberately done when there is uh, uh, hatred against uh, the Muslim uh, in terms of the birth rate. So um, even uh, killing somebody who leaves their religion uh, in this country, nobody can do anything above law. I'm a Muslim. I'm British. My law is the British law, which is for everyone. And so to be mischievous and say that these Muslims have some other laws in this country, they will breed children, they will take over uh, this country is a deliberate attempt uh, to frighten people. Just um, <clears throat> on the uh, uh, secular rule that Muslims are called after uh, Hijra to leave and go, uh, to be frank, uh, I hosted uh, Christian communities from uh, uh, Ethiopia last night here because of the human rights situation there. Uh, Abyssinia was a place where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked his companions to go and live under a Christian ruler because he allowed them to live in peace, just as the majority, 20, 30 million of us who are living uh, here in the United Kingdom, in Europe, and in the United States. And I know, I know that uh, if you look at some of the figures, then in, in America, Internal Revenue Services have quoted saying $200 million are uh, uh, spent by Islamoph Islamophobia industry uh, last year. Most are designated as hate, uh, hate crime groups by Southern Poverty Law Center in the United States. Uh, so, I think uh, we need to put things into context. Um, I don't have to preach anyone uh, what the Holy Bible, which I respect, uh, the books of Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and both books of Kings talk about slaughter, genocide. And if these, these fanatics, whether they're ISIS or Daesh, if they then picked up the Bible and said, this is why they invaded Iraq and this is why they killed Muslims because this is the uh, teaching of the Bible. It's complete nonsense. Because for me, the religions, whether it is the Hindu religion, the Sikh, the Buddhist religion, the Buddhist religion, one of the most peaceful religions on earth, you see what's happening in Burma, in Myanmar, to Rohingya communities. It's the individuals who abuse the text, whether it is uh, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, whichever religion, who abuse it for their own violent and political purposes. Uh, so this is a great country. And frankly, we don't need Islamophobes because every time when you see uh, people from uh, UK, Britain first and others who create this hatred, there are uh, attacks on Muslim communities, on European communities, on ethnic minority communities that go up. And I'd like the minister, when she's replying, uh, she could tell us the figures in terms of, you know, when they use this bad language, um, how much uh, hatred and hate crime goes up. Only last week, a Muslim woman was refused uh, in McDonald's uh, to be served because she was wearing hijab visible Muslims with beards, or even Sikh communities with turbans, how they are attacked. People who speak, 
European language, how they are abused on buses and everything. We've seen the videos. So I think in a, a, a wonderful place, in this democratic place, we should be talking about the great contribution communities have made. When my father came here, after the Blitz, this country's industry had been disintegrated. If you look at the steel industries, the textile industries, the infrastructure, the health service, and the transport industry, ethnic minorities, Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, from Europe and from Commonwealth, they came here and made this country the Great Britain it is today. And during the Labour government, we had the third largest economy. Proudly, I used to go around the world telling people. And today, even, fifth largest economy in the world is Britain. And all of us together, we have done, yes, we have criminals. But if we start pointing finger at all the Muslims first, then maybe the Jewish community is after, and then maybe the Sikh community is after that. And then we might say, well, all these colored people or people with color or different people that don't look like us, don't have the green eyes like us. They are the ones who are responsible for our social deprivation, unemployment and, and the economic crisis that we have. Then that's the, what the Nazis did. That's what Hitler's people did. My lords, I just hope that we come to our senses and talk about the great contribution. This country, this is a great country. Muslims, non-Muslims, all of us stand together. This is a great country. So terrorists, those who murdered 37 of our citizens, my sympathies.